Hello, this is Keith, welcoming you to the 1929th edition of the Enfield Talking newspaper, dateline the 7th of November 2013. The readers this week are Janet, John, Sally and Keith, with Robin on the controls. The items that we will be reading come from our local newspapers, the Enfield Gazette and Advertiser and the Enfield Independent, and are their copyright. Our title music is Country Rock Poker, composed by Pat Prilly, Ferdinand Bouillon, Harry Brewer, and performed by Jean-Jacques Perry, and is used with his kind permission. Local stories include Hospital Fight Reaches Court and Majority of Parents in Favour of Spy Cameras. A number of special news items this week. First, the Home Library Service. This service is part of Enfield Libraries and provides a delivery service to people living in the borough who are unable to visit a branch library due to age, mobility, disability or their caring responsibilities. We visit each of our members every four weeks. The service is free and we will tailor it to your taste. For visually impaired people, we can provide books in large print or recorded books on CD or cassette. We can also bring music on CD or films on DVD for people with some vision. Members are free to reserve particular items. If you would like to join the Home Library Service or know someone who would, please call 01992 716 010 and we will arrange for the Community Access Librarian to visit you. That's 01992 716 010. Here's a message from Enfield Vision. Remember to go to the Park Avenue Disability Disability Centre on Thursday the 21st of November at 10.30am until 12.30. Enfield Vision are holding their drop-in meeting. It finishes at 12.30. This is an early reminder about the Enfield Vision Christmas party on the 2nd December at Park Avenue, 7pm till 9pm. That's the Enfield Vision Christmas party on the 2nd of December at Park Avenue from 7 till 9 Now an important message about Sylvia Chapman's dance. Sylvia is organising a dance at the Civic Centre on the 26th of November from 7pm till 10.30. The tickets are £14 and include drinks and a buffet meal. For all more information and tickets, ring Sylvia on 07535 624 915. It's always such a good evening, so please don't delay. I'll give you the number again. It's Sylvia, and the number is 07535 624915. Finally, the Enfield Macular Disease Support Group. This group meets on the second Wednesday of every month from 10am to 12 noon at the Trinity Church Hall, Gentlemen's Row, Enfield, EN26AN. The meetings are open to anyone affected by central vision loss, and carers are welcome as well. For further details, please contact Alan Newson on 020-8886-5659. That's Alan Newson on 020-8886-5659. If you are experiencing any problems receiving your Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane De Jersey on 020-8805-6578. She is your listener's representative and she will be pleased to help you. That's Diane De Jersey on 020-8805-6578. Now Janet will read the first item of local news. Barristers for Enfield Council outlined their legal case at the High Court in a last-ditch bid to halt the downgrade of Chase Farm Hospital later this month. Protesters had gathered in front of the Royal Courts of Justice early and the courtroom was packed with health campaigners, residents and senior council officers as the authority presented its case to Justice David Bean. The council is seeking a judicial review of the decision by Barnet, Enfield and Haringey Clinical Commissioning Groups to give the go-ahead to the controversial strategy which will see the hospital in the Ridgeway Enfield lose its accident and emergency and maternity services. The Council's argument is that promised improvements in primary care, which had to be in place before any services could be removed, have not been fulfilled. 
a recommendation made by an independent reconfiguration panel in 2008 and 2011 after previous calls in by the authority. Andrew Arden QC, representing the council, said that the promised improvements, including four new primary care centres, were a key part of the strategy. He said the argument by health chief barristers would be that the primary care strategy for Enfield was developed in 2012, separate from the hospital changes. Mr Arden added, from 2012 the primary care strategy appears separate, but hitherto it was always linked to it. We say primary care changes have been part of the clinical strategy all along. The CCGs voted in favour of the strategy in September. It will see maternity and inpatient paramedics, no sorry, I'll read again, inpatient paediatric services moved from Chase Farm on November the 20th and the A&E department to close its doors on December the 9th. After those dates, patients will have to go to North Middlesex University Hospital in Stirling Way, Edmonton or Barnet Hospital in Wellhouse Lane, High Barnet. Barristers representing the CCGs and the Health Secretary are expected to urge Mr Justice Bean to throw out the Council's challenge. They will argue that improvements to primary care were never a precondition to services being removed from Chase Farm. The only preconditions that they will say were sufficiently sufficient capacity at North Mid and Barnet and the ability of primary care services to accommodate the changes in patient flows. The Council has admitted the challenge may not be able to completely stop the hospital downgrade, but to, could delay it until primary care improvements are implemented. Mr Justice Bean is expected to decide whether to grant permission for the legal challenge, but if allowed, he could hold back on a ruling. Parents who park illegally while picking up their children from school could be fined under a new pilot scheme launched by Enfield Borough Council. Cameras have been set up outside schools in the borough to record the number plates of cars parked illegally for more than three seconds. Photos of the number plates will be relayed back to the council, which will either send a warning letter or a fine to the owner of the vehicle. Enfield Council has confirmed it is one of several local authorities, including other London boroughs, trialling the system. <coughs> Helen Paniotu, who has a daughter at Walker Primary School in Southgate, said, those people who do this will get what they deserve, as there is enough space around here anyway. It's wrong for people to park wherever they want, regardless of restrictions. Schools tend to hold on to your children if you are late. They won't kick the kids out. Despite a majority of parents being in favour of the pilot programme, some warn it be could become a cash cow for the local authority. Another Walker parent, Mario Pesciris, was not in favour of the plan. He said they are trying to make money from illegally parked cars, but there haven't been any accidents or crashes here. There has never been an accident here, and people are not parked here for very long. He added... They wanted to expand the school, which was unsuccessful, and the issue with that is that you would have more people coming to the school, more traffic and more foot traffic, yet they want to put CCTV up to prevent people from dropping off their children. Oliver Brookhalf walks his children to the Southgate School every day and doesn't feel it's necessary for parents to drive. He said, I think sometimes it is lazy of parents to drive their children. To try to collect your kids by car is a recipe for disaster. There is no point because it is far too busy. I think it absolutely fair for this to come in. Sangeeta Heindel, a parent at Keeble Primary School in Winchmore Hill, said it has become chock-a-block and supports the new proposals. She said, it's a hazard for cars to be parked illegally, especially for those who travel by foot. Those who do park illegally should be punished. An Enfield Council spokesman said, Enfield Council is committed to improving road safety for all pedestrians, especially children walking to and from school, and reducing road safety-related casualties. This is a pilot project, 
and we will evaluate its success before making any decisions on future use. Enfield North MP Nick Dubois said, Illegal and dangerous parking outside schools is a big problem for many of our schools, but it's a bit rich for a council that ignored warnings of excessive traffic and parking problems when it bulldozed through school expansion schemes, often against schools and parents' wishes, to then employ, employ more spy cameras. It is dealing with the symptoms, not the cause of the problem. The importance of remembering the great sacrifice of our brave servicemen grows as each year passes. The reality is that as the number of World War II veterans able to attend services diminishes, the duty grows on subsequent generations to attend and keep alive the acts of remembrance. This is particularly the case in Enfield, where there is an event to commemorate the Arctic convoys at Enfield's dedicated memorial outside the Civic Centre in Silver Street. We have a special opportunity to say thank you to some of the few remaining survivors of the convoys. They are heroes in the true sense of the word. They withstood appalling Arctic conditions on the North Atlantic seas and attacks from German U-boats and aircraft as they sought to provide vital supplies to Russia. By May 1945, the Arctic route had claimed 104 merchant and 16 military vessels and thousands of Allied seamen lost their lives. Prime Minister Winston Churchill reportedly called the route the worst journey in the world. It has taken until this year to award a medal to our heroes. Enfield Arctic Convoy survivors will proudly wear their medals and will be greeted by Russian, American, Australian, South African and New Zealand attaches. We in Enfield don't have far to travel because we have on our doorstep, due to cross-party support led by the late and much-missed Stan Carter, a former mayor and veteran, one of the few civic memorials in the country dedicated to the convoys. The point of the event is to pay tribute to the remaining survivors and their compatriots and also to re-establish the great link between the Arctic convoys and Enfield. The three former boroughs of Enfield, Southgate, Edmonton and Enfield, paid by public subscription for three cruises in the convoys. Now, more than 70 years later, Convoy survivor FWC Brackett Duke Thompson said, The lucky ones lived, but too many died. Let us always remember those days with pride. Labour Party members in Southgate have raised concerns after it was revealed that a party fundraiser who may run as a parliamentary candidate has made a large donation to the Tories. Ibrahim Dogus, fundraising officer for the Enfield Southgate constituency Labour Party, has been recorded as making a personal cash donation of £1,250 to the Enfield North Conservative Association on the 28th of June this year. The money was used to pay for a table of guests at a fundraising dinner which was held the previous day. The dinner, which took place at Bush Hill Park Golf Club in Bush Hill and was attended by Justice Secretary Chris Grayling, was aimed at boosting Enfield North MP Nick Dubois' campaign for the 2015 general election. Mr Dogus, who is director and founding member of the think tank Centre for Turkey Studies, said he did not attend the dinner and he made the organisation on behalf of he made the donation on behalf of the organisation. The Enfield Southgate member, who is considering putting himself forward as a parliamentary candidate for Labour in that constituency for 2015, told the Enfield advertiser, I have not made any donations in my individual capacity to any political party other than Labour. I may have spoken to people from various political parties about certain events as part of the work my organisation does. The Centre for Turkey Studies is a non-partisan organisation and we have links with all political parties in the work that we do, which is about building bridges between Turkey and Britain. While the London Labour Party said the donation was incorrectly listed, backing Mr Douglas' explanation, Ben Maloney, Secretary of the Enfield Southgate Constituency Labour Party, said he was not convinced. This is a very serious matter that has come to light and we will be investigating accordingly, he said. 
The Labour Party rulebook states very clearly that party members cannot support candidates who are standing against Labour candidates. A spokesman for the Enfield North Conservatives said there has never been any mention of the Centre for Turkish Studies or any other organisation. This was received as a personal donation and recorded as such. Two Enfield MPs have been shown around a new health centre for older people, which opened last month. The Older Persons Assessment Unit at Chase Farm Hospital treats elderly people who are finding it difficult to cope getting about the home. Enfield North MP Nick Dubois and Enfield Southgate MP David Burrows met nurses and consultants from the new centre at the hospital in the Ridgeway Enfield on Friday, October the 25th. The MPs heard how staff carry out blood pressure tests and make other assessments, such as finding out if patients have help around the home. A treatment plan is sent to the patient's GP as a result of the assessment. This includes recommendations such as changes to medication, therapy or other help and support. Mr Burroughs said, It's good to see new, innovative services at Chase Farm which will help my elderly consistent con constituents receive timely care without needing to be admitted to hospital. Mr Dubois added, more and more of us are living longer, so it's important that we reflect, the we reflect the health needs of this growing section of the population by helping to keep people well enough to keep out of hospital wards. This innovative unit is something all hospitals should have. The new centre is one of a number of different implementations as part of the Barnet, Enfield and Haringey strategy, which is seeing 115 million invested into hospitals in each borough and the proposed downgrade of Chase Farm Hospital. A teenager found just the right words when he discovered he was the 100,000th young person to take part in a public speaking challenge. Enfield Grammar School pupil Cairo Sango was astonished when he learnt he was the landmark trainee of the Jack Petty Speak Out Challenge. The 15-year-old was presented with a certificate by the Jack Petty Foundation set up by a self-made businessman to give young people chances he himself never had. Cairo said, It was really great. It gave me an opportunity to express myself. To be the 100,000th student, wow! This scheme has helped a lot of people. The challenge is intended to give 14 and 15 year olds confidence in public speaking. Program director Brian Anderson said, through the power of speech, we empower many young people. Concern for the health of the boroughs, rivers and streams has prompted Enfield Borough Council to take action. The leaf leaflets have been delivered to homes where plumbing problems have caused rivers, streams and brooks to become polluted with waste. Pims Park, Lake and Brook and Turkey Brook in Enfield have been polluted by domestic waste water which is killing wildlife as well as becoming a health hazard to anything that enters them. Last month, the Enfield Independent reported that numerous streams had been affected by the problem causing, caused by misconnected plumbing. The Houndsden stream in Winchmore Hill had more than 30 times the amount of faecal bacteria than legally allowed by European standards. The Friends of Albany Park have been delivering leaflets to homes around the park, reminding residents of the significant consequences on Turkey Brook. Councillor Chris Bond, Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for the Environment, said, We know some homes are discharging sewage and all sorts of other nasties directly into Pims Park Lake, and we need to put a stop to it. We want residents to check their drains, wastewater and sewage pipes are properly connected and if they aren't, to put them right. We're trying to be a responsible council and resolve this amicably. But if we can't achieve that, we will be forced to prosecute the people responsible for polluting the brook and the lake. Our main aim is to get the problem sorted, preferably without anyone being dragged through the courts. It is a criminal offence to have toilets, kitchen sinks and washing machines 
misconnected into the surface water sewer instead of the waste sewer. A community activist has launched a blistering call to arms over regenerating a neglected street, which he believes is crying out for a revamp. Matt Riches, co-owner of the Step Cafe in Middleton Road, off Green Lanes, on Enfield's border with Haringey, has issued a rallying cry to residents and businesses to do everything they can to make the area around Bounds Green and Bowes Park a more attractive prospect for new shops, cafes and bars. He believes the economic investment would benefit the entire community. Mr Riches, who set up the cafe with his wife and business partner Nell last year, has formed the Middleton Road Action Group in a bid to revamp the area, which has, for too long, activists claim, been choked by landlords more concerned with renting out their properties as high-density housing rather than letting them out to eager and enthusiastic businesses. We've always felt there's a great potential in the area, and we know that there are other people, other businesses, wanting to set up here, but they can't largely because of the overdevelopment of housing in the street, he said. It really is quite frustrating. Mr Riches is passionate about what the road could become and feels it's a lack of vision from landlords that is blocking the fight to bring investment and economic development to the area. They don't realise what they are sitting on, he insisted. It might be easy to cram nine flats into a building, but that's not a long-term strategy for improving the area. We just want some of the landlords to show a bit of vision and imagination and realise what the street could become. He is also calling on Haringey Council to step up and invest in the street, but the authorities said it was doing all it could to give the area a boost. A council spokeswoman said, We gave £5,000 start-up funding for Middleton Road Market and promoted it widely. We've also made £200,000 available for a heritage project that will see extensive restoration work to four shop fronts, and we have funded studies to explore future options for the road. An Enfield woman refused to be beaten after being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007. Fitness fanatic Mary Huckle of Bushill Park channelled her career as a personal trainer into making a full recovery. Now the 48-year-old is helping other women who have been diagnosed with this disease using her exercise classes to help. She said, straight after my surgery, I went back to doing some exercise. It really gave me my confidence. Of course, it's not as intense as my previous training, but doing some form of exercise every day perked me up. Also, the exercise helped me to focus on something else apart from the treatment I was receiving. Mary Huckle's fitness classes and personal training sessions are open to all. But in the past few years, several women, women who have suffered breast cancer have taken up the classes to replicate the Enfield woman's recovery. Mary said training women who have been through the trauma of breast cancer is the most satisfying part of the job. She said, for me, working with someone who has been through breast cancer and being able to give them their life back gives me so much satisfaction in my job. It will be the toughest parts of someone's life and everything seems so bleak. Really giving someone their confidence back is a nice touch and makes my job even more worthwhile. Mary Ann had surgery four years ago and, having attended the Pilates class twice a week for six months, had noticed a real difference. She said movement in my arm had been compromised from the surgery. I had some physiotherapy which didn't really work. But from the Pilates I've been doing in Mary's classes, I've noticed a real difference. Already it has given me much more movement in my arm. These classes have helped me build up stamina in my arm and I recommend Pilates to women who have had chemotherapy. Mary said, because of the surgery that take place, Pilates is one of the most helpful activities women can take part in. They were the borough's bravest whose selfless heroism during the First World War saw them decorated with Britain's highest military honour. Now, five Enfield soldiers who were awarded the Victoria Cross are to be commemor commemorated with special paving stones as the centenary of the start of the conflict approaches. Captain Alistair Malcolm Clooney McReady Diarmid from New Southgate was awarded the Victoria Cross posthumously in March 1918 after he had been killed by a bomb three months earlier. 
His medal was awarded for driving back enemy attacks and regaining captured ground. Sergeant Frederick Charles Booth, who was born in Wood Green and was a pupil at Enfield Grammar School, won his VC for rescuing a seriously wounded man under enemy fire near Johannesburg in South Africa. Lance Corporal John Alexander Christie from Warwick Road, Upper Edmonton, was awarded his Victoria Cross after single-handedly bombing an enemy communication trench in Palestine. He died in 1967. Private Robert Ryder's heroics involved single-handedly storming an enemy trench and clearing it out with his Lewis gun on September the 26th, 1916, in Thiepval, France. He went on to live with his wife in Albuhira Close, Enfield. Second Lieutenant Alfred Herring from Palmer's Green recaptured an enemy position at Montaigne Bridge in France on March the 23rd, 1918. He worked as a chartered accountant after the war and died in 1966. In 2006, a new Weatherspoons pub in Palmer's Green, the Alfred Herring, was named after him. The paving stones are part of a nationwide scheme by the Department for Communities and Local Government in which the slabs are presented to the hometowns of heroes in time for 2014. Enfield Council's Cabinet Member for Culture, Leisure, Youth and Localism, Bambus Sharalambus, said, I am delighted that we will be able to recognise their heroism and establish a lasting memorial to their actions during the First World War. The Council is eager to hear from those who may know of other Great War Victoria Cross recipients from the borough. Those with details can call John Clark at Enfield Museum Service on 020-8379-2724 or they can email john.clark at enfield.gov Dot UK. I'll just repeat those numbers. The telephone is 020-8379-2724 and the email john.clark at enfield.gov.uk. We have now reached the end of side one of this tape. Please stop your machine now, take out the cassette, turn it over and start side two. <laughs>